Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Sean with Medieval Collectibles and today we're taking a look at a Scottish basket hilt broadsword. This weapon is made by Cass Hanway and is based on a historical replica that's located in the Royal Armories in England. All in all, it's a beautiful blade, so let's dive right in. Basket hilt swords, in general, were a development of the 16th century, after which they rose in popularity during the 17th century. It was during this time that this style of sword really flourished, so much so that it spawned a handful of regional variants, one of which was the Scottish basket hilted broadsword. In Scotland, basket hilt broadswords, such as this one, were a popular weapon among the clansmen. We it alongside a targe, which is a light buckler, they were the preferred weapon of Scottish warriors during the Jacobite rebellions. During said conflict, they demonstrated their devastating effectiveness against the British soldiers in close quarters combat. This particular Scottish basket hilt sword is a traditional example of that war sword. It displays a thick, powerful blade with just a bit of profile taper. That means the blade remains relatively long across its length, narrowing only slightly as it progresses to a very powerful point. The blade is set with three short fullers right about here. The main fuller is located centrally on the blade with a wide, shallow form, while the other two are very narrow and just a bit deeper. The central fuller is engraved with the name Andrew Ferrara. Why? To understand that, it helps to know who the man was. Andrew Ferrara was an Italian-born artificer and smith who was brought to Scotland by King James III to instruct the Scots in the manufacture of high-quality steel blades like those used by most of Renaissance Europe. His prolific skill in bladesmithing, as well as his success in Scotland, made his name synonymous with high-quality sword blades. Case in point, a sword of extremely high quality in the 16th and 17th century Scotland was often referred to as a true Andrew Ferrara. Fun fact, there was indeed something special about Andrew Ferrara's blades. No one knows his exact method of manufacture, although historians suspect that Ferrara made his swords by interlayering iron and steel. The resulting blades were known for both their flexibility and their durability, so much so that they rarely broke or failed. Back to the weapon before us though. This basket hilt sword is hand forged from 1566 high carbon steel. It has a tough, durable, and flexible blade that is double-edged, and it is very sharp. It has a hexagon cross-section and a flat ground edge. Its point of balance rests about 5 inches from the basket. The sword's point of percussion, that point at which the sword vibrates the least upon impact, is about 22 to 23 inches up from the basket guard. You can see it here as I give it a few light impacts along its length. It's right about here. The uniquely detailed Glasgow-style basket fully encircles the hand and is made from stainless steel, which helps keep down maintenance on the weapon. It also features a stainless steel pommel, which is tightly fitted to the full-length tang. The basket liner is fabric-covered suede, just like in the original, displaying a vibrant red color on the exterior and a more subdued cream color on the interior. The sword's grip is made from wood wrapped in genuine ray skin. Added to the top of that is a single length of silver wire wrapped around the subtle spiral form of the grip. It has a very distinctive texture that helps keep the blade steady in the hand when in use. The blade indexes quite well when wielded thanks mostly to the basket that encloses the hand. The blade weighs about three pounds, but it feels much lighter. It's very well balanced and again, very sharp, which allows for quick, easy swings that possess quite a bit of cutting power. The sword's very responsive as well, and I had quite a bit of fun using it. On a personal note though, I did find the sword's grip to be a bit unpleasant to hold at first, although on subsequent uses, it has become less of an issue. It's possibly just something I've grown used to, so be aware of that. It may take a little bit of adapting before you're comfortable with it. The sword also comes with a scabbard, which is made from wood and wrapped in fine black leather. The scabbard has stainless steel fittings at the throat and at the tip, as well as a clip on the interior. With its combination of historical design and effective form, I'd say this sword is worthy of the phrase, a true Andrew Ferrara. Whether you're of Highland descent, 
interested in a weapon to practice historical Scottish fencing, or just looking for a nice sword to own and use, this basket hilt broadsword by Koss Hanway is definitely one to keep in mind. Hope I've been able to educate you not only about a bit of the history of basket hilt swords, but also help shine some light on this fine sword before me. I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe, and as always, comments are appreciated too. If you want to pick up this fine Scottish basket hilt broadsword, you can do so by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.